first bat in 1893. And a matchup of old rivals. More memories will be made here today. I'm going to bring the back. Going to claim my victory. There is the snap, the kick. A team that has won the ball game. game gets folks in this thing stirred up. You guys ready? It's going to be a fight. Fight to bring the fire. Going to claim the victory. Here's the ball. Up and over. And in. Staying town with my people. Oh, that flux and cooking. Oh, that's the end of the game. Going to claim the victory. make some history. Chris Davis, an answered prayer. While we scream. CBS, as we bring you to the loveliest village on the plains, Auburn, Alabama. 88,000 on hand for the 88th edition of the Iron Bowl. The Home Depot SEC on CBS from Pat Dye Field and Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn. And the matchup so many times and so many thrills. The Crimson Tide of Alabama and the Tigers of Auburn. The record not what the Tigers had hoped for at this point of the season, but the fans don't care when Alabama's in town. And Hugh Freeze and his quarterback, Peyton Thorne, will lead him out. On the other side, Nick Saban, the once beaten Crimson Tide and ranked eighth in the country. Let's... Let's turn him loose. Here come the Tigers. And in rolls the Tide from Tuscaloosa. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Nestler. My partners are Gary Danielson and Jenny Dell. I think you've done 16 of these. I've done seven. <laughs> Crazy things happen when these two teams get together, man. You bet, and I'm ready for another one. We've seen everything. I'm ready for what we had a couple years ago here. That was good enough. And that was good enough. And it's strange a way that these teams are so alike record-wise. The fact that Alabama's got Georgia in the SEC championship coming up next week. It's all set up. And let's kind of take you back two years ago, Bryce Young. And the Alabama Crimson Tide had all kinds of problems. Yeah, remember how that pass rush affected Bryce Young and then the comeback. And then that last drive, Ness, Bryce Young took it over and got it to overtime. And as you said, we might as well stick around for the fourth overtime. That was the one that did it. And Alabama had to come from behind and survive. So now we head into a new season. And Alabama comes in on a nine-game winning streak. I don't know that I've ever seen a guy improve more over the course of a season than Jalen Milrow. Absolutely not. The whole season changed when Jalen Milrow became the centerpiece of this Alabama offense. He earned it the hard way. Remember, after one game, he was benched. But when he got back in there, he got his confidence. He became not only the running offense hub, the passing offense, but his personality. The team kind of looked to him to provide that 
energy on the field. It's his football team right now. With the way he's playing, how dangerous he is, let's talk about Auburn defensively. What do they have to do? Yeah, I think you can't allow Alabama to have two weapons against you. Yes, Jalen Milrow's good, but Auburn has to stop the run. And to do that, they're going to have to load the box. And I think the key players for Auburn are their two secondary players, the corners. Nehemiah Pritchard, DJ James, two of their best players. They're going to have to go man-to-man, load that box, and make it Jalen Milrow and see if he can beat him with a one-man show. You know, we think we know the mindset of the coaches because we get a chance to spend time with them on Friday. But coming off a disappointing loss, and I mean disappointing to New Mexico State last week, Auburn wasn't supposed to lose that. So, you know, what Hugh Freeze, what's he thinking about? Yeah, I think it started right at the beginning of the week. I think he looked at his team and said, if we're going to beat this Alabama team, we got to believe. you got to believe in yourself, your teammates. Believe that this place at home, we can win this game. If we don't believe, who's going to believe? And Nick Saban, on the other hand, nine straight wins. They know they've got a date with Georgia and Atlanta next week. How about their mindset? I think it's back to the process for Nick. You've got to respect the game, respect your opponent, and all the work you go. You just can't show up today. The process has to be the key. Funny, talking about respect, two guys that respect each other, coaching against each other. With more on that is Jenny. Well, guys, we have a new Friendsgiving tradition between the head coaches, Nick Saban and Hugh Freeze, and it's called the Iron Bowl now. They haven't coached against each other in six years, but they've spent a lot of time together off the field. Now, Nick and his wife, Miss Terry, he has actually hosted Hugh Freeze and his wife, Jill, at their lake house. The coaches enjoy playing golf together. All that quality time has led to a deep-rooted friendship. Now, Freeze said when he was out of the game for two years, it was Coach Saban who was a pillar of support and one of his biggest encouragers. And despite the fact that Saban, he calls Saban the king and the gold standard, there is a hunger here to be Alabama. Something Freeze has done twice while at Ole Miss. But guys, their friendship, it's being put aside today. Boy, for sure, very few people can say that they've ever beaten Nick Saban twice. The weather, the first time they played this game was in 1893. They played it in February. I think we got better weather today, actually. Oh, it's it beautiful. It is perfect. Auburn won the toss, and they want the football. 88th meeting. Alabama with the lead by 12 in games. They've won three straight. And we're set on a beautiful day in Auburn. Will Reichert's got it teed up for the Tide. Brian Batie and Jarquez Hunter are back deep for the Tigers. One more time for the Iron Bowl. Here we go. And they're going to bring it out. You talk about gutsy. Brian Batty. And good return out to the 25. 